Hello everyone, Opirian here with a quick disclosure for the following video. I received these keys from the developer to create content on, so hopefully there will be no bias towards the game, but do be prepared for any that may appear. Thank you, and enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Opirian here with The Last Federation, with the new expansion Lost Technologies. It's pretty much a top-down kind of space strategy diplomacy simulator, as far as I remember. I have played it before, not Lost Technologies, but The Last Federation and a bit of their first expansion, but honestly, I never got quite that far. But anyways, we are going to be hopping in with a new game, so we're going to just do a quick start with a strategic and combat difficulty of normal, and mm, let's see. No, we're not. We're not going to do the special game mode. So we're just going to go and start here. I am the last of the murdered race of Hydrals. We took to the stars and shot down the manned launches of everyone else. My countrymen were the dictators of the solar system, so we kind of had it coming. Yes, that's me above, and you are me. This is our story. I was a sole survivor of a surprise attack by two other races, thanks to a renegade mission I undertook betraying the other Hydrals to bring spacefaring technology to our potential rivals. Turns out, when you strap rockets to a moon, you can catch even the dictators off guard. My ultimate goal? The creation of a peaceful, unified federation of planets. Only then can we be safe from the kinds of atrocities my race committed, and those the kinds that were committed against us. Naturally, upon my crash landing at this planet, I was placed in captivity. Having no concept of my strength, they did not realize I was merely waiting. I waited for years. Stardate, first one, blah blah blah, blah 3000. My dream of a universal federation is as alive of ever, as ever, and now the Acutians have finally gotten themselves in orbit. After spending so much time with me as a peaceful captive, they were ill-prepared for my escape. I have commandeered the first prototype executor, and now the Acutians are in hot pursuit. The Acutians are still in the process of ramping up their space industry, so that gives me a short window of opportunity. But soon, their mechanical CEOs will be looking to make planetary acquisitions. These dangerous Amor robots destroyed the last remnants of my race after the Evox almost wiped us out. Having them as an enemy is a given, I think. Here they come. I outclass this force so severely that it will be almost impossible to lose. So now is a good time to put my ship through its paces, but I still have to be careful. If they manage to take out my ship, I will be just as dead now as later. Ding. It's always your lonely flagship, plus whatever NPCs allies you can muster, versus an indeterminate number of foes. Common is turn-based, with every moving acting the same term after you give ship your ship or orders. Blah. I can't speak today. Your first order of business is to give your ship a movement order. To figure out where the enemy is, you'll want to use the mini-map. Pan your view with WASD or the arrow keys and zoom in and out with the mouse wheel or page up, page down. Anyways, here's our enemies. I could resolve the conflict peacefully by docking with the survey platform or destroying everyone. We're going to destroy everyone. So we're going to set our movement. Uh, I promise I won't bug you constantly, but this is for blah, blah, blah. Look at the bottom of the screen, you have new options for us all. Three different weapon choices down there and multiple attack ones. Hold fire out of a blah. blah. Choosing the right weapon, bear in mind, misleading, spread shot, battle is dead simple, yep. Okay, we're going to go with fire at this guy, because I don't like him. I should have checked the we we weapon out. <laughs> Anyways, he died. So we're just going to keep destroying these cutters. And we're going to blow this guy away. Yep, this is where a chance you actually have a chance. This is actually where you have the ability to avoid some damage. Check out the top of the screen for objectives. Most battles have a single objective, but the objective may involve multiple parts. This is what you can do. Either you can choose to destroy the enemy flagships, you'll gain some credit, or you can identify blah, 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 quite large, and usually they'll want at least. Yeah, there's at least one chasing you. Hover over them, make sure if you like, which I'm taking care of their strike craft because I like to. Alternatively, you can dock with their science lab. Blah, blah, blah. You'll get detect and make them stronger. Is that smart? Blah blah blah. Fun. 
So we have bullets coming, so I think I can make it here. Thankfully you don't dock right away. Take care of you. Commence the firing. And oh, you're weaker to the energy blaster. Enemy shields are down. Indeed. Now I believe. Now it's the gravity lens. Oh, gravity lens. Flagship power management unlock. I swear this is the last time I'll interrupt you during this battle, but now you're getting a few turns in. There's one more bit you probably have to know. It's give direct control over power distribution to your three subsystems. An incre uh, increasing power to your weapons gives you higher damage output as well as longer range. Increasing power to your shields gives you faster shield regen and makes your shield more resistant. Increasing power to your engines gives you faster movement, better turning, and, fur and a further distance you can move for turning. You want to move this onto the next line here. Uh, to set your power levels, just click the various bars or use hotkeys. There are instructions and tool tips, however, each turn each turn your ship automatically changes power based on the context. But suppose you don't issue a movement order, well, div well, it diverts power from weapons or shields instead. Now, attacking to your shields, blah blah blah. Okay, so I can set it, but it will divert automatically if it needs to. Automatic management doesn't make manual management pointless. Consider I'm low on health, so I'm going to crank up my shields for a while at the expense of I need to be able to maneuver very caref carefully here, so I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm an ops here, so let's get there with nothing shields, all the weapons, let's go. And so on. These sorts of larger decisions are point of the game and point of the power system, not moment to moment fiddling. Uh, what was better about turning is different power levels. You see, but you know, the default levels, which is all you've had until now, you move pretty well, but you can move super precisely if you crank all the way up. You can barely move or turn if you crank it all the way down. Hey, how the heck did you do that, Curly Q? Waypoints! Simply hold down shift key while issuing movement orders and you'll lose a little speed with each third waypoint, so your total distance goes down a bit, FYI. Are you feeling a bit overwhelmed with all this info? Sorry about that, but you do not have to memorize it. You can review it at any time by viewing your logbook in the menu that pops up when you hit the escape key. Good to know. And... Power to weapons. There we go. Victory! The Acutians lost 10 base power, 28 effectives, and 1 Warner's man. Turn taken, 13. You took a total of 140 shield damage and no hull damage. 49 hostile ships, I destroyed 40. Critic gained 152. I lost 100 to 102, so I'm now disapproved by the Acutians. And it took 9 seconds of relative time. Rescued 3 Acution pilots from escape pods. Which I can sell those back at it. I'm going to introduce you to this gradually. For now, a lot of stuff is hidden. Don't worry about trying to create the Federation yet. We'll get to that later. It's not even an option that yet. Right now, we'll need to worry about getting credit to spend. You'll also need to accumulate a good amount of influence with other races. A humble suggestion is to start by delivering space ring tech to the Skylaxians and Nords or Palatians. And then run some dispatch missions for them to gain more credit. Your current focus should be making on yourself more powerful and influential, and as you admit, complete missions and political deals, I'll open up more and more ways for you to do that, culminating in, the culminating in the option for trying to form a fledgling federation. If you want to read any of this, but blah, just read your logbook. So the question is, also, we appear to be... A ring world is the Acution home world, which is interesting. Here's my own world, at least my old one, ruled over by the Acutians now. Watch for any moves, moons you don't recognize. Good, uh, good advice. Anyways, the question is, do I want to be a dick to everyone, or do I want to actually form a federation? I think I actually will form a federation, but I will let you guys, the viewers, decide. But for now, we're just going to follow their advice, and we're probably going to add the Skylaxians to our repertoire. Of course, we also have the Endor, Andor, which don't hate us as much. And not the yeah, not the Evox. The Evox try are the ones who kind of killed a lot of my people. But we also have the Palatians. But I think we're gonna go Skylaxians. Yeah. 
And then we go to not friendly acts. Feeling friendly? That's the spirit. If you're going to form a solar federation, you're going to have to make some friends. Credit is a super important concept. This is your social currency, so to speak. Doing things other races that they appreciate, or sometimes cases doing things that intimidate a race gain you more credit. You can spend the credit with almost any race to get them what you want, or any mercenaries. Credit is basically money, but it's a little more nuanced than that. But be warned, sometimes no friendly actions you can take with the race. Either you don't have anything to offer them, or they simply hate you too much to even accept needed help. This is one of the many reasons that your influence with the race is so important. Depending on actions you take, your influence with the race goes up and down. High influence makes them more likely, likely to cooperate, low influence makes them more likely to try and kill you. So I'm actually going to deliver them spacefaring tech. After I hire a diplomat. <laughs> uh, hiring a part-time mercenary diplomat to interact with the race. We want to make the race more likely to reach you in quest for any races, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to we're gonna get a diplomat. Then we're going to get space, deliver the space ring deck. Which is actually a mission. Oi! Okay, so stuff just got real. Maybe. This is either going to be incredibly easy or impossibly hard depending on how many races are already space -faring. Just be careful by alerting those spy probes, make your way to the drop zone, and that's it. The spy probe breach race will have unique sensor tests, bullet patterns that they fire when any foreign object, such as yourself, is detected or by. If you get hit by any of those shots, or if you fire a spy probe on the spy probes yourself, the probe involved will be alerted and you'll take a penalty to influence with that race for each probe you alert. The goal is to maneuver clearly so you get past the probes without any of them sensing you, or at the very least with as few as possible sensing you. Early on, only when a couple of races are spacering, you may be able to just waltz over to the drop zone in a couple easy turns. If that's the case, more power to you. Each one of these gets harder as you go, so enjoy ease while it lasts. Note that once you alert a spy probe, it turns hostile, speeds up, and starts unleashing more and more damaging attacks. Fight those probes away from the main body of, or other unalerted probes if you can, so that the stray shots of yours don't wake up anyone else. Which is probably a good place. And we're gonna go powered engines. And first, we need to find the drop point, which is right here. So, thankfully, it's easy. Well, easier. We're gonna hold fire, because we don't want anything firing. And the enemy has quite the pattern going now. So. We can actually go around them, which would probably be the best choice. Thankfully, their bullets dissipate after a bit. We're just gonna sweep on in here. Don't think I got detected. So these are execution probes. Damage? Microwave damage. So yeah, these are their uh, search shots, which make sense, I guess. And drop off the tech. Pawn successfully jettisoned with technical documents. Yay! The Victory. Are now space -faring. Thank they you, are AI. Are an species and disapprove of your race's past actions. However, they may just be the key to forming a federation, as their powers of persuasion over the other races are non-trivial. Turn taken eight, no shield damage, no uh, eight hostile ships, and destroyed zero. Nine seconds of relative time, or 0.45 solar months. 14,000 credit, and Skylark scenes went up from negative 20 to 30, so 50 neutral. Skylark scenes became spacefaring. Awesome. Uh, your side of the game, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay. I think we'll also give the Endors spacefaring tech. They, they seem like cool people. And we'll also hire a diplomat. Helps if I can click the right button. Always well, deliver space running tech. We already know this. Hopefully, we don't get caught because now we have Skylaxing probes. So, no auto fire. We're actually going to hold fire, and we're going to move in so I can see their search pattern shots. So we know these guys go out in a Y. What we need to worry about are the Skylaxians. We're probably going to sweep in here, up and above. There we go. 
No, 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 no. Ah, damn it. I think I'm about to get hit. Oh well. So I got detected twice. And I did I did that horribly. Fuck it, just drop off the technical documents. <laughs> They did quite a bit of damage to the shields. Well, let's see what happens. are now spacefaring. Their benevolent nature may make them a source of help. Hey, there's a new tech progress button under your basic info tab on the solar map. It shows you what technologies you and other races have researched. By the way, don't worry about memorizing all this, blah, blah, blah. There's nothing super complicated about the concept of technologies. Once you erase of a check mark on your column tech progress screen, that's it. You know the technology and you get whatever benefits it confers. There are a lot of different kinds of technologies, some benefit your flagship directly, and those ones are grouped at the top of the tech grid. These typically do things like increasing hull strength, improve science or manufacturing skills, etc. A lot of them have no direct benefit for you. You're not a planetary power, so you don't name things like safer nuclear power, for instance. But these technologies are of immense value to your allies and enemies. Help your allies get what they need, and you'll be that much closer to forming the Federation. Don't underestimate the power of science. If a race gets far ahead in the number of techs they've learned, they can absolutely dominate enemy races and have much larger fleets. This takes quite a while, though, so having larger fleets in the meantime is a plus. Heh. <laughs> How do you fit in? Well, there are now research technology dispatch missions that you can take on most planets and in the black market. You can also research technologies on your own, or learn technologies from races that already know them. Once you gain access to the black market, hiring scientist coons will let you make super time-consuming techs make reasonable, take reasonable amounts of time. Lastly, under hostile actions for each race, you can now raid for technology to steal what you need. To do this, you have to recruit an informant, which is your general link to the criminal underworld of each race. Except the Andors and Thraxians, which have no criminal element for very different reasons. One way or another, you need to get the techs. Okay, so the Acutians hate me even more. Oh well. Anyways, it doesn't look like a Skylaxians saw me at all. The Burlesque Warlords are now space-faring. Extreme caution is advised. They seem likely to take their constant internal wars to the solar stage. Okay, we're gonna turn down the music so we can hear down hear her a bit better. Uh, not disable music. I do enjoy the music though. So, anyways, um, the Berlaxians are now spacefaring. Which, if I can remember where they are, not Ber not Berlaxians. I just mixed a bunch of races. The Berlust are now spacefaring. So, hey, awesome. So, we do have this counter here, which does say how long until they are spacefaring. I believe that's real time, but since we're paused right now, that doesn't matter. And we have also people other joining the stars. Other people joining the stars. So, yep. Here is the symbol for the Andor, which thankfully they're in the stars with us. And hopefully they won't, you know, be mean. Anyways, if I remember right, the Andors live in a, uh, well, the Andors are about the best enemy they have. All in all, they aren't about, about violence, but I don't think desire ever spread out through their utopian homeworld. Their disapproval means it will find it will to get favors from the future, however. Yep, the reason it's hard to do anything against the Andors, such as getting informants, is because they are a utopia. So we don't have to worry about that. The other race that was mentioned doesn't seem like we have in this solar system this galaxy but they're essentially a hive mind insect race so that's always fun so is um i can actually do political deals like general agenda i, I can convince them to colonize their moon which i will actually do so it'll actually yep I actually took three solar rounds, one minute of relative time, spent 600 credits, a moon-bearing uranium was colonized, which is very handy for them. I'm going to increase the power of the Andors and the Skylaxians, because that would be a smart idea to get them on my side. Now, I could go to the Pelicians and give them spacefaring technology, so I think I will. I like this background. I do love the art for this game. It is awesome. So, we're going to go ahead and deliver them space ring tech. And since the Acutians already hate me, 
I may just bull rush in. <laughs> At least not care about their bullets. Oh. Wow. This is a fuster cluck. So we're going to take a power of weapons. And put in his shields. Can I take all power out weapons? No. Oh, well, it should automatically divert power. Screw it. We're gonna. We're just gonna go for it. And I actually gravity lanced them. Good job, me. <laughs> Yay! The and got are now spacefaring. Uh, they are okay. And weak. However, they have a penchant for blowing things up from orbit. They may be easy allies to win over. So, I do now have the Acutions. I lost 5 points with the Andors and 5 points with the Skylaxians. Hopefully that won't be an issue much. Anyways, uh, we should check out that tech tree. Uh, tech progress. So here's pretty much everything that helps me. Which I want. Anything with a green box is better. Well, not green box. Yeah, I can use. Other technology... Uh, yeah, so see, uh, you can see here in this uh, tooltip, this technology will directly benefit your capabilities, which is nice. So, I think we're going to... Let's see, uh, not the advisor. Race relations. You can see that almost everyone hates us. Yep. How do the Skylaxians think of everyone? Uh, they're pretty neutral with everyone. And yeah, you can see the Burlust have a lot of hate. <laughs> or at least dislike. So that's going to be fun. Did I notice the uh, Thraxians? Oh, we do have Thraxians. The insect race. <laughs> they really hate me. <sighs> There's our homeworld. Yeah, let's check out what friendly acts we have here. So we can help destroy a pirate base, assist with our armada construction, improve, improve race relations, but well, we're going to hire scientists because scientists will hire 10 because that'll be 10,000 credits, which is a quarter of our credits. <laughs> so I'll execute that deal. And I need to remember how to research. Here's the power grid, which I'm in alliance with myself. Awesome. So, uh, tech progress. 141 of 170 techs are unveiled because it is only the year 3000. I believe I do research later. Anyways, we do have the Palatian Collective, which these guys are kind of adorable. With their innocent outlook and pleasant demeanors, these barn owl-like creatures are some of the easiest to get along with in the solar system. If they don't already have a grudge against you, that is. Getting them into the Federation early is one of the easiest ways to get the Federation started, but can make the more warlike races score in the Federation's weakness. So, we're going to... Let's see. Not accept worship. We're going to convince them to colonize their moon. So, this will gain us Palatian, blah, blah, blah. Execute deal. Okay. So, did I actually execute it? I think I did. Either way, I'm running out of proxies. Anyways, I... Th well, shit exploded. I don't know what exploded, but shit exploded. <laughs> Alright. I think we're going to call it an episode here. This has been Operian. Hope to see you guys next time.